Moscow Doors Bastard Club. already for somebody I told uh, I have a luxury I'm going to speak longer than usual uh, in uh, my president's speech and also as a Toastmaster of the day and um, I would like to introduce a structure of Toastmasters because recently <coughs> and lately some people from our community not only from our club asked me Katya what is F on the agenda? What is 108 on the agenda? <laughs> How can I understand what is all these numbers and letters are about? And today, please help me. Uh, I'm good. Uh, on the first slide. Yes. Oh. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, and please, the most experienced um, Toastmaster, please be quiet. But the rest of this audience, I have a question. And next slide, please. Which area of Toastbusters our club belongs to? One. And get <laughs> Yeah, you are right, probably most prepared right here. Okay, next question. What division are we in? Uh, 108. Yeah. F. 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 Yes. yes, you are right. I am looking to you. Probably the last question, what about okay, our do we, do district? Do you know the mm. number of our district? 108. Yes, and about region, maybe somebody will try to guess. What is the region? Oh, Russian what? You are right. How did you that knowledge. <laughs> yes, and here on the slide, next slide, uh, we can see a little bit structure here. Uh, yes. So this is our region, region ten, and our district one hundred and eight included in the, this region. But. Um, the most important not region 10, uh, two years ago something it was nine region, but the most important right now, one and zero eight our district number is. And the next slide, please, could you? Yes, so guys, area one, division F, district 108, region 10. And here a little bit hierarchy of those clusters. So, headquarter, Toastmasters, yeah. um, region, district, division, area, club, <laughs> all of you. Yeah. Uh, so, um, now I really believe that all of you are not going to list up again what is the numbers and um, letters. Let's have a test. Boy. <laughs> Next slide. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, what is our area? Mm. How many clubs in our area? Six. Okay, <laughs> how many? Six? Or five? No, five. Five. So, all English speaking clubs included in area one, all Russian, uh, French, and German clubs in area two and three area is uh, no three yes area is about Kazakhstan and uh, all this stuff and um, so Toastmaster in general we have one newcomer uh, all Toastmaster is uh, about learning and improving our communication skills and uh, Marcelo Hai join us um, and leadership skills and in my opinion, it's also about grow as a person, even because all these soft skills very demanded right now, and nobody's going to argue with me, I suppose. <laughs> uh, so there are two hundred and eighty thousand plus members in one hundred forty-four countries, and uh, there are almost fifteen thousand clubs. Next slide, please. Yes, and this is 
not surprising, I suppose, in District 108. There are how many? Seven countries. Poland, uh, Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Finland, Russia, and Kazakhstan. So we are big, biggest community, I suppose, in all this Toastmaster stuff. And it was a joke, to be honest, because uh, the biggest community in America, because historically it happens, all clubs started there, most clubs. But we are also growing, and I hope in one year we will have much more members and clubs. Next slide, please. Ah, yes, uh, and just going to stop and uh, explain. No, 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 district one and numbers okay, again in our district 100, I suppose, uh, 1,800 right now in 92 clubs, uh, a lot of areas and six divisions. Is it clear right now about structure of, uh, of Toastmaster? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> um, okay, uh, but again. Area 1, Division F, District 108. Why are you looking at me? Division F. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, uh, I, I it's very important for people who is going to participate in the international contest. contest. That is why I'm looking at you. No, you're so, so, yeah, next slide. I don't remember what it's going to be. Ah, okay. Uh, a little bit further, we will move to this slide. But today, usually, uh, we have a tradition, all newcomers, we ask to come on stage and introduce yourself. And today we have one comment. Please. <laughs> Last year I graduated from university where I studied Russian philology. Now I'm looking for a job. Uh, I don't know exactly what I want to do in my life, so I just want to try different things. And yes, I know about club from my mom. Oh. You probably know her, so I was invited many times. And here I am. Glad to be here. Nice to meet you. <laughs> uh, right. Yes, we need a photographer today. Oh. Maybe some of you would like to be there. Yeah, there. Yeah. 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 I can yeah. get some pictures. Oh, so much. We have our new yeah. <laughs> nice. system of VPPR. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Be seated and enjoy our meeting. And uh, right now, uh -huh, I'm going to introduce our Toastmaster of the Day. And our Toastmaster of the Day today is Yekaterina Dimova. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. uh, I decided to discover today a very very interesting topic for me, at least. I hope for all of you, all of you will be also very interesting. And this is about your calling. Vocation or calling is the same, you probably know. Somebody also was missed out <laughs> and confused. So, calling and vocation is the same. What is your calling if you ask you? Can you answer easily? Who can? Who can, guys? What is your calling? <gasps> oh, okay, lights. don't worry. <laughs> okay, Daniel, what is your calling? Polar lights. Polar lights? Oh, that's Polar interesting. Light. <laughs> Very interesting, I have never heard of it. But anyway, so... Something, I was absolutely sure that I'm a finance person. And when people ask me, Katya, what is your calling? What is your vocation? I can, I could say it easily, I'm a finance manager, I'm a, I don't know, corporate finance specialist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was absolutely sure that this is my calling, all finance stuff. 
However, the older I got, the harder it was for me to answer this question. And if you ask me right now, what is your calling or what is your vocation, Katya? I have no idea. I have no answer. And uh, for those who also, like me, <laughs> don't know what is your calling, I have a few tips for you today. And at the end of our meeting, I believe maybe you can know about, you will know about yourself a little bit more. So I prepared some questions and uh, my assistant is going <laughs> to help me. Next slide, please, can you? Yeah. So I have some questions that can help you when you answer this question with your calling. So, uh, I'm going to give you one or maybe two uh, minutes in order to answer. And uh, please don't answer all questions. That's but just also maybe. Not all of them. Not all of them. Maybe two, one, two, three. Because it's a. Uh, ah, okay. So, wait for you. So, you have please time up. Okay, can you? Yeah, um, one and a half, I'm sorry, eight minutes. one or two, not voluntarily, <laughs> person to share your findings. You write so focused ah, that basically yeah. nothing, nothing else. exists. Yeah. It's like you're there, it's just you like post time. Oh. 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 No, no, no. Floor stay. Floor yes, stay. The, I suppose I have another topic for my next or maybe <laughs> two weekends. Yeah, because uh, it's my favorite topic, floor stay. I'm also looking for floor stay, by the way. If you know where it is, <laughs> please let me know. Um, I suppose. It's done, should be done. It's not necessarily you should answer all questions, as I mentioned. Please, if you would like to share with us your findings, then you'll thank you for your activity today. Yeah, please do it. Yes, you can uh, go here or... Yeah. Any comments or sharing? Yes, absolutely. Uh, well, the, the first question, what do I most like doing at work? Routine tasks. What do I most dislike doing at work? Routine tasks. <laughs> it's all... The, the thing is, and uh, this is a very philosophical question, because uh, it's just a matter of um, your state of mind, uh, and uh, the time that is available, also the time of the day, uh, the pressure around you, and many other factors. Because doing routine tasks actually can be quite soothing and it can be quite therapeutic. However, if you have to do it under stress, and if you have to juggle a few routine tasks, uh, and a lot of attention is required, that could be quite um, unnerving. So uh, it's, uh, just, it's, uh, yeah, it it's just a matter of an attitude. Uh, what skills or attributes do people compliment me for? Communication. 
Uh, what skills made me feel uh, make me feel useful? Communication. What activities put me in a flow state? Communication. <laughs> uh, because once again, uh, a lot of, uh, in my humble opinion, a lot of issues that we face in our daily life, whether it's a work life or uh, otherwise, are related to miscommunication. Yeah. So the clearer and better we can structure our communication with each other, then the easier and more productive and more useful the life is going to be. What did I aspire to be when I was a child? You'll be laughing, but um, one of those uh, callings is uh, almost obsolete by the artificial intelligence interpreting. And another is teaching, uh, which is, uh, uh, well, uh, perhaps uh, is, is likely to be partially made obsolete by the artificial intelligence as well. Uh, what are the most successful projects I've worked on? International and interdisciplinary interdisciplinary and uh, that's where I think um, the um, if you are looking for a column uh, that's where the most value is because um, there are a lot of specialists in a given field but there are fewer specialists in a field that is an overlap of a field A and B uh, one of my favorite examples is Medicine and radiophysics. There are a lot of good doctors. There are a lot of good radiophysicists. But those who have a profound knowledge of the medicine and also a very good knowledge of radiophysics, who can then uh, combine the two to develop the diagnostical tools, uh, there are very few of those. And this is where the scope for uh, growth is. Uh, this is just one of many examples. You can think of your own examples and um, make your own inspiration. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I suppose we don't have time for another presenter, or if you wish, you can. Yeah? No? No? What do you think? Okay, let's move on. Don't be shy, guys. Don't be shy. Just, it's a serious question, I believe, but still, just a lot of um feature for the state is the full state. <laughs> so the next tip that um, I would like to give you, visualize your ideal career. And actually this is something <laughs> that I would like to do from time to time. And this is exercise that you usually psychotherapist provides any of us, especially coaches in terms of coaching business coaching, and just imagine you don't have any financial security. So you have a lot of money. What would you like to do? What you love to do, right? Just imagine for one or two minutes right now <laughs> and uh, put yourself in that role. And this is also good exercise for me. I tried it and it helped me before, not now, but <laughs> I'm still trying. And uh, right now I'd like to ask Nikolai Vasiliev to come on stage and tell us your thoughts of the day today. <laughs> Uh, today we discuss uh, calling and of course the main question is uh, how to understand uh, what your uh, calling really is. Uh, it would be, um, it, it seems to be very easy to answer. Well, if I like what I do, if I enjoy it, when well, it is my calling. Uh, and yes, it is, uh, often it is true. Uh, however, uh, as always, uh, things uh, can be much more complicated uh, than that. Uh, one of the contemporary uh, women uh, philosophers, Eleanor Stump, uh, told the following story about the uh, famous English poet uh, John Milton. Uh, although uh, Milton uh, felt a calling to, uh, to be a poet, to poetry, uh, 
at some point he decided to work for Puritan government uh, that uh, had come to the power in England. Uh, and he loved his job very much. Um, we can say that uh, uh, one calling outweighed the other in Milton's case. Uh, and only because the Puritan government uh, didn't hold the power in England and Milton wo uh, was forced to run away, he began to write uh, a poem uh, for which we uh, love and remember him. Uh, and uh, it seems to me that uh, the main takeaway from this story is uh, that uh, our calling is uh, not always what we consider it to be. Uh, even if we uh, love it very much. Uh, uh, and we are not always able to immediately understand what our calling really is, and uh, it often takes us uh, through very difficult life circumstances to, to, to understand what our calling really is. And therefore, we need to be brave and open to the possibilities uh, that... Uh, that uh, that can be better, that, uh, that can be our true calling in the future. Thank you. Um, well, the next tip, thank you, again, very deep as usual. Thank you. Uh, and uh, the next tip is that I would like to give you choose habits that feed you in you heart. For example, if you would like to be a lawyer, by a course, you would cost a lot more. I'm joking. But um, if you would like to um, be a storyteller, for example, you can um, practice reading and you can practice listening, uh, speaking, and, and so on, and even writing this storytelling. So, something that can help you in your pathway. And here I was going to ask Ekaterina Shulakova, our quiz master, to introduce uh, her role, and I'm going to do so. So here, please, try to listen actively. Everything that I am talking right now, I'm going to ask, <laughs> quite a going to ask, so be attentive. The fourth uh, tip, educate yourself. And, of course, it's not a secret. The more we learn, the, more, the better we become. And um, in terms of this particular tip, maybe you can take not only some research and uh, find something about your career, but also you can take um, internship, for example, and try to do what you think you would like to do <laughs> and try to figure out, is it your social? And uh, here, I would like to ask our grammarian today, educate us a little mm -hmm. bit. <laughs> Please, uh, Martiana, uh, Martina, Martina, <laughs> Martina, 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 Dear fellow Toastmaster, your guest, good evening. So my role today as a, as a grammarian is to pay particular attention to your speech and uh, point out the mistakes or misuse of the, of the language, as well as uh, pay particular attention to uh, what is standing out in terms of good use of the language, nice words, nice phrases, and uh, yeah, basically what stands out. So the word of the day is lavish. Can we put it number down somewhere? Uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, do, 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 do. Yes, of course. Okay. okay. Lavish. Uh, so lavish means sumptuously, sumptuously rich, elaborate, luxurious, something that is generous and uh, in, and extravagant in in, quality, in quantities. So, for instance, can be a lavish uh, banquet, or um, for instance, another sentence could be "Everyone lavish the children with attention." Okay, so it's something that is very elaborate and very generous. <clears throat> I would say sometimes even extremely. 
Yeah, you can put this book here. Here? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yes, why not? And uh, I will count. Uh, I will pay attention to the people that use the like the the word of the day. So and uh, I will uh, call the winner at the end. <coughs> Thank you. Well, uh, our next tip will be about um, to do do do. Take it one step at a time. Right? Step by step. And here it's something about milestones. So um, don't rush. Don't go without any thinking. Uh, a little small steps is the key. And um, here, don't rush usually. Our accountant ask everybody who is going to talk here. Don't rush in order to avoid filler words. And our accountant today, Sanira Dosta, is on stage. Dear fellow Toastmasters and guests, uh, my role today is to help us become more aware of filler words and more words and ultimately reduce their use in our speeches. Why is this important? If you want to give instant credibility and authority to your speech, minimizing these filler words is the key. Filler words and non-words include sounds and phrases like uh, um, you know, kind of, like they not only take away your credibility, they also cast a shadow of doubt over what you are saying. More importantly, they can disengage the audience because your message becomes cluttered and less clear. And to combat this, uh, there are three strategies. The first one, uh, awareness through recording. Start by recording your conversations with friends and colleagues. Listen to these recordings and note how often you use these filler words. Awareness is the first step to change. The second strategy is mindset shift. Our use of filler words stems from discomfort with silence. We rush to feel any pause uh, in our speech. Shift your mindset to become more comfortable with pauses. Silence can be a powerful tool in our communication because it gives more weight to our words and allows the listeners to absorb your message. The third state strategy is catch and pause technique. Finally, when you feel a feel of word about to slip out, pause. Take a deep breath. This brief moment will allow you to regain control of your speech and to continue more thoughtfully. As the counter, I will take notes of any uses of filler words, not to embarrass someone, but to help us become more mindful and skilled communicators. Thank you. So the next tip is about structure your time. And this is something important to me with all these tips. Of course, we all have different responsibilities personally and uh, our business also. Yeah, we, we have a lot of. And um, when you have this vocation, understanding about your vocation, about your goal, um, please try to structure your time. For example, if you decided to take some course, online course, or whatever it is, you should think, okay, I need to do this, so I should ignore, um, just avoid my friends. And <laughs> don't 
communicated them as, uh, with them a lot. I'm joking, but something like that. So you should to try to make your way more meaningful and again, we can't do everything, right? We should to avoid to uh, how is it called in English? I forget this word. So um, neglect. That's yeah, something different. So our time of today is going to tell us how to manage our time and how how to, to make structure. So guys, uh, as we know, as we all know, the time is relevant, uh, and the time is also uh, can't be uh, measured properly by ourselves. So we need a person from outside to help us control the best of time. And my role today is to do that, and for that purpose I have this uh, card, which consists of three colors. The first one is green, the second is yellow, and the uh, third one is uh, red. When I show the first uh, card, the green one, it means that uh, you, are, you still have uh, uh, some time, that you are doing great, and uh, uh, you can go on. Uh, the second card, uh, the yellow one, means that uh, you still have time, but it's about uh, uh, but it's about time to wrap up, to finish your thoughts, and uh, to finish your uh, and, and to give the floor to the next person. And the red card means that uh, you are out of time, and uh, it, it's actually necessary to finish uh, speaking. As for the precise timing, uh, we have. Uh, uh, I will show the green card uh, for, uh, at uh, 1 minute, the yellow at 1.30 and the red at 2 minutes for minor roles like uh, uh, account, a grammarian, quiz master for, for introduction to this role, of this role, so, sorry. Then the same rule applies to table topic speakers. Each of, of these persons uh, has uh, from 1 to uh, 2 minutes and uh, additional 30 seconds uh, to think uh, their speech uh, beforehand. And um, for the bigger speech, which will be uh, presented by Valeria, uh, the next rule uh, applies. It's from 5 to 7, correct? Uh, green card at 5, uh, the yellow one at uh, 6 minutes, and the red one will be shown at uh, 7 minutes. Uh, for personal evaluator, uh, the speech should be from 2 to 3 minutes, uh, the green card will be shown at 2 minutes, uh, the uh, yellow one at 2.30 and uh, the red one at 3 minutes. And uh, finally we have uh, uh, reports by uh, grammarian, timer and uh, a counter, the report should be from 2 to 3 minutes. Uh, and Quizmaster has a little bit more time, from 3 to 5 minutes. Uh, the green one uh, will be shown at 3, the yellow at 4, and the last one at 5 minutes. So please uh, pay, pay attention to the timing, and I will help you at doing that. And finally, uh, at the next meeting, I will give my report. And my advice is about <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, find a mentor or vocational counselor. And here I would like to say that our club also has uh, a lot of, I suppose, uh, mentors. And if you would like to really improve your communication skills too, and uh, the most important public speaking skills, you can ask. Anna Rubinina or Anna Gonzalez for help because we really, not only in our club, again, in our whole community. And one person in our club, a young member, I suppose, but um, very experienced already, is going to present her next speech. And I believe she can be a Definitely our mentor, if you would like, you can ask him directly. And um, Valeria Gariel is going to present the speech on the title Give Me a Zen, right? Project Understanding Your Leadership Style.
level two, visionary communication objectives, I should say, I suppose, to identify your personal or preferred leadership styles. Valeria, the stage By the way, grammarian, there is no mistake. Just, just, just in case you thought this was an error, this is not an error. It's on purpose. You'll find out in a moment. Where is your <laughs> the article? The eight. Ah, genius, eh? You'll find out in a moment. Okay, I think we we can begin. Um, you can begin with the first slide, please. I would like to bring everyone's attention to these two pictures. Does anyone know the name of this job? Cheerleaders. Cheerleaders. Can you notice any similarities between these two photos of cheerleaders? Girls. They're girls, yes. They stand on, on one leg. They're standing on one leg, very good. One similarity. Smiling. Smiling. Second. Perfect. One similarity that I notice first is they're all smiling. Yes. They're 10 meters up in the air and they're freaking smiling. I have a lot of respect for these kinds of leaders. Firstly, well, they spread cheer and joy. That's nice. But secondly, their endurance. If someone was to throw me 10 feet up in the air, you know what my face would look like? Well, let's find out. Next slide, please. <coughs> Something like this. <laughs> I mean, surprisingly, most people in the past have told me that I'm very much like a cheerleader. Can you tell? Can you, can you see? But I think they meant it more metaphorically. What do cheerleaders do? They hype up the crowd, they cheer, they support people. But Let's go to the next slide, please. Can you see any similarities between myself? Girls. Both girls? Yeah. Both girls, perfect. One leg. One leg. <laughs> the, similarity One that, the similarity that I see is that both faces are strained. They're not relaxed. Both of our expressions requires some energy, some muscle work. And while I think that a leader can smile, I don't think that's a necessary skill to smile all the time. But what is necessary for a leader is to be zen, to be steady, to be someone people can rely on, someone people can trust. And how do we do that? How do we become someone people can trust and rely on? I think the secret is in good communication. And luckily, throughout my life, I've had a lot of opportunity to observe and test and learn communication skills, from being an English language teacher, to traveling the world, to working with people from different countries and different cultures. And in fact, in the last month and a half, my communication skills were tested once again. Next slide, please. <laughs> if you know, you know, on the 10th of February, <laughs> on the 10th of February, we will have a Chinese New Year party for all of the Toastmasters community. If you don't know, yes, this is a shameless ad. If you don't know, you can come and speak to me or Daniel, who will be co-hosting the event. <laughs> you can come and speak to us during the break or after the meeting. Do you have a question now? I have a ticket already. Oh, you have a ticket already. Perfect. Okay, well, my work is done. See you later. <laughs> but these kinds of experiences 
test our communication skills. And what I would like to share today is to echo a little bit what already has been said by Yekaterina with her tips. But I would like to share the four lessons that I've learned. Something that can help all of us bring a little bit more zen to our leadership, a little bit more control and hopefully peace to your leadership styles and hopefully can also work in any situation. So can we go to the next slide, please? And again, one more time. So my uh, lesson number one, have genuine curiosity. The people that you work with, your team, your colleagues, your friends can lead you to plenty of unexpected places. But sometimes we get stuck in the perfect vision, in the way I want the final product to look like. But it is not perfection that leads to the best outcomes. It is the curiosity to follow the wildest ideas. So listen to the crazy opinions, ask questions, find out why did that person say this? Why did you say it? What did you mean by this? Can you tell me more? To develop curiosity, we need the next technique, the next skill, which is the ability to pause. What I've noticed in myself is that when I'm excited by something, when I feel like I have knowledge to share and something important in my mind to say, I move really fast and the people around me are like, whoa, okay, hold on, chill out, slow down. Because what happens when you rush? You start to make mistakes, you start to miss out on information and you begin to misunderstand. And I believe most communication problems can be solved by slowing down, by slowing down and tuning into your attention. That brings me to number three. People around us are not mind readers. So tell people what you need from them. Ask them. Some things are not obvious. Maybe they are obvious to us, but they might not be obvious to others. So tell people what you need. Ask for help. Ask what you need uh, to get done. And translate the picture in your mind to the other people. And uh, think we have one more lesson I would like to share, number four. The final one is set an example. The way you talk and behave tells people everything they need to know about you. What you think is appropriate, what you are ready to accept, and what you don't think is okay. So, if you wish to be respected, show people how it's done in practice. Now, I'm personally not mastered all of these myself yet, but that's okay. Because there will always be factors like stress, new environments, exhaustion that will make you stumble, impact your performance, and even make you fall. And when you do fall, because it will happen, take a cue from cheerleaders and surround yourself with people that know how to catch you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very interesting. You are very thinking, as usual, this week. Uh, and this is it, I suppose. Uh, if you have more understanding of your vocation, Maybe you can share with us who would like to? Oh, yes. Please. Not, not yet. Okay, interactive, interactive uh, time. Yeah. Okay. Well, to tell what my calling indeed, it's a great secret because it's a high risk. 
So let's assume my true calling is to be a guest at Toastmaster English speaking clubs. <laughs> so I found what I really want in my life. Okay. I should tell something else. So uh, let's assume I'm completely happy, 100% happy with that uh, being uh, present at Toastmaster Club's meeting as a common guest. Let's figure out. Okay. Ten minutes. So, see you. Okay, ten minutes. We had a break. Ten minutes. Please, and we have some cookies, please. Uh, for our job. Потому что я помню, что я тебя и так писал. Я не хочу. Our second, second, second part. And uh, our um, second part is even more exciting. <coughs> exciting, I suppose. So, uh, table topics session, and I would like to introduce our table topic master. Do you want to do it? Yes. You can encourage to use the word of the day. Yes. <laughs> Oh, by the way, yeah, the word of the day was the lavish, right? Yes. I'll write it bigger. Oh, okay, okay, so what was lavish. Okay, so are you ready for the most challenging oh. and exciting oh. part of today's game? Oh. 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 Yes. Oh. <laughs> 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 oh. okay. yes, I'm actually Miles and Miles. Okay, Miles, hello. Yeah. I'm personally very kind of frightened of that kind of role, that's why I'm here a host. So no chances to be here doing the speeches, <laughs> but I made some questions for you. So briefly the rules. I created the questions, very simple. I think so, I hope so. So you come here on stage, willingly or unwillingly, pick up any questions and deliver speech one to minute, right? From one to two. From one to time. And you also have 30 seconds to prepare. Uh, yes, 30 yes. seconds. 30 seconds to prepare. After all the speeches, we will have a voting, and we will present... We will have a voting! <laughs> the, the best speech with some kind of ribbon. Okay, so... I know who wants to be the first, yeah? Okay. <laughs> if, 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 As you know, we cannot break the tradition. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Go, go, go! Hey. Everything is okay, but not on the screen. Yeah, okay, you can take Okay, do you need 30 seconds? Uh, no, okay. Okay. Uh, uh, question? Okay, okay, okay. What, is the, what was What's the question? What's your favorite film or book about the person's vocation or calling by? Uh, okay. 
uh, after after having uh, socializing with Valeria, I feel awkward being so serious uh, <laughs> because uh, I don't know what else to say. But uh, I'm now gonna be extremely serious, uh, quite unusual for the atmosphere, especially tonight, thanks to Valeria. Uh, so, uh, let's assume, okay, uh, I'm not sure what, uh, how to translate the name of the film into English. Uh, Anderson, Life Without Love. Well, um, I'm sure, okay, okay, who have not seen the film, I strongly recommend to see, to, uh, sorry, to watch, to watch, who have not watched the film, strongly recommend to watch, uh, what else, uh, uh, no doubt for me that the film is about the calling of Anderson. Um, I'm overloaded with my seriosity now. So, as Chekhov said, as Chekhov said, if uh, you have a toothache, say thank you, but uh, on, on, because only one tooth aches, and not all teeth. So, if uh, uh, your wife committed adultery, thank the situation that uh, it committed adultery to you, but not committed the test, the, the betrayal, I don't know what to say, no shame on me. And, uh, okay, I see, I see, I see. If you are unlucky with ladies, watch film Anderson, Life Without Love. You are a cousin over to compare with Anderson. Okay, so who wants to be the next? Okay. Online audience wants to be the ah, next. Maybe, yes, some. <laughs> Valeria wants to be the next. I know. I, that wasn't me, I didn't yes, know that. Yes, yes, yes. Miles. Miles was online. Miles? Yeah. Miles. Uh, yes. Hello. Would you like to be a guest? Miles, do you want to participate? Sure. Oh, okay. Sure. Okay, I will participate. Okay, Miles, so I will do the job for you. I will take up the questions. Okay, so Miles, this is the questions. Question. Relation, relationships are about finding a compromise. Right? Should one compromise on the dreams and where is the line? Did you get it? Should someone compromise on their dreams and where is the line? Yeah, the relationship with other people, person, like marriage, is always about finding some compromise. And where is the line between finding a compromise and pursuing your own kind of dreams? Very good. Thank you, Mr. Table Topics Master Daniel. Well, when it comes to compromise and be mindful of the consequences of not compromising, this is a very important aspect of a successful marriage. So for example, at the moment, I am using my wife's old iPhone. Every time uh, there's something wrong with a phone, my old phone is, is cascaded to the garbage and I get her phone and she gets a new phone. And here I am again, holding a phone that is not working very well. In fact, I must <laughs> hold it. I have to hold the wire, the charging wire in a very certain spot or it doesn't charge and it, losing, it is losing charge very rapidly. So if I disappear, it is because my phone has collapsed. <laughs> but she, she today will be um, going to get her new phone. And then again, I get her phone and she will be happy. Happy wife means happy life. That's my compromise. Mr. Table Topics Master. Yeah, my 
else. <coughs> so, okay, so I'm not really good job there. Okay, so who's going to be the next? No. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. I see that you're right. Okay. And don't forget to get lavish. You can take other one and do it Do you think that each and every person has its Do you think that each and every person has their own calling and should seek for it? Maybe some people don't. I had, okay. I had the conversation with one of my younger brothers very much about this question and he's 22 he's just graduated uh, from a university studying he studied philosophy so it's very difficult for him to find a job now because <laughs> sorry <laughs> Nicola, I see you smiling <laughs> so it's very difficult for him to find a job now and we were discussing the topic of do people have one singular purpose and one singular calling and in that conversation we came to the conclusion that people just become lazy they don't want to work and we are looking so hard somewhere else to do something else because we're not enjoying the present moment we're not enjoying or we've forgotten how to enjoy what we already have right in front of us it's all become about searching for something we're meant for some deeper purpose but honestly, I think the deeper purpose is to just be a nice human being. It's not about your work, it's not about the job you do, but it's about not being an ass. Excuse me, <laughs> <laughs> pardon my language. So I would say that the purest and the deepest calling is to be able to treat each other with respect to treat each other on a human level, to find that understanding and just enjoy what the hell it is that you are doing now and stop, stop searching, chill, have some zen, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> children regarding following their vocation how, how to determine it what advice would you give to your sorry someone is calling <laughs> <laughs> yes you're calling <laughs> what advice would you give to your children regarding following their vocation how to de determine it well simply I would say just uh, do things <laughs> like because as Valeria said like you know, following like something that is you know, imaginary or you saw on YouTube or you saw on Instagram or you saw on the social, whatever, you know, it, it just uh, not, um, uh, it just frivolous stuff to me, actually. So start by doing what you like, what you like, what you, what you study for or, you know, just start, <laughs> <laughs> just start, you know. Just start and then I think I think little by little, little by little, it's like a puzzle. Puzzle. At the beginning you don't have the, the full picture, but then little by little, putting the pieces together, it's gonna start seeing the picture, and then it's gonna gain momentum, and uh, yeah, you're gonna feel like uh, and every step counts because every step, every action you take is gonna motivate you, motivate you more, and you're gonna do. And you know you're gonna see the results, even the small things. You know, uh, so make a plan, right? Start then when you when you, by doing start making a plan, and then you see the things they're gonna pile up and building, and that's gonna be basically your calling. <laughs> I'm either. I 
to try, but I will not <laughs> promise that. Um, can a really good money substitute the true calling for a person? Why? Can a really good money substitute a true calling for a person? Uh, it's difficult to say for me because I can't say that I had a good money in my life. Uh, so when I was a child, I thought that um, something worth of doing, if you like it, it's not about money only. So, but now I met some people who um, Ha, ha, who has quite boring job, but they can enjoy their lives because they have a, a lot of opportunities because of that money. So I think probably it depends on a person whether you uh, ready to waste your time for money, <laughs> and then you can substitute it with maybe I don't know traveling or really mm, worth the things which cost more because unfortunately I can say that you can uh, live free, I don't know, mm, your full life without money at all. So yes, I think it depends on the person. Do we have people? <laughs> yeah, we do have people actually. Yes, we have time for two people. For two people. Ooh, two lucky people. people who wants to participate. Come in your childhood. Why? Are you happy that this happened? Didn't happen? Well, that's a fantastic question because it actually is going to be a, a, a sequel to to what I have been um, already mentioning here uh, at the very beginning of the meeting uh, in terms of my childhood thoughts on career progression. And uh, the question is, who did you want to become? Uh, the answer is that I did want to become a linguist, uh, which was putting my math teacher in a complete horror. Mm -hmm. Because she, she was shocked, she was bedazzled, she was absolutely flabbergasted uh, over thought that a man would be an interpreter. You will never find a job. Uh, you, you will, how are you going to be making your money? Uh, you should really be going to study mathematics. So I, I, I did choose uh, middle ground and uh, uh, my degree is in public administration. But uh, nevertheless, my passion towards interpreting and languages uh, have persevered. Uh, and um, that's what I'm doing now, uh, more often than not. Uh, though, uh, as already mentioned, uh, that uh, vocation is likely to be replaced by the artificial intelligence uh, quite soon. So are you happy that this didn't happen? Yes, I'm happy that this didn't happen because artificial intelligence <laughs> will replace it. Um, and um, that has um, offered me new perspectives to life that I'm happily exploring. And knowing languages is a very useful skill anyway. <laughs> So the last chance to practice the proper speech speaking. Mm -hmm. I will. Okay. The simple question is here. The simple? Yeah. As usual. Oh, I don't believe you. <laughs> oh, oh. Simple. What would you change in children education to help 
help them become happier in their adult life. Uh, Very simple, right? <laughs> Guys, don't go to the school. Just, just don't. <laughs> don't. Don't learn anything. You, um, when you're when you are really young and uh, very freedom, you feel freedom. You don't need to be uh, overwhelmed with all this educational stuff because right now everybody knows uh, you have children. Most of you, uh, there are a lot of um, a lot of homework our children should do, and all this childhood, I believe, is about enjoying the life, enjoying this childhood mess or whatever it is. So, um, back to my childhood, I think if I were me right now, I didn't, I didn't learn anything <laughs> and just enjoy my life. Because again, I, I, I'm not joking, uh, right now even for my uh, daughter, when she was in ninth grade or something, I told her earlier, it's good to know everything, maybe even in our life, but don't take seriously all this learning stuff, because right now you can learn any skills, and all these skills are uh, progressing and changing over, all over time. And um, the less you know, the happy you feel. <laughs> so, this is something I would like to say all children and all educational person, I mean people who are creating all this um, schedule and all um, subjects. Don't do it, just remarks, enjoy your life and your childhood. Yana, as the youngest here, mm -hmm. please don't educate yourself a lot. I mean, just enjoy your life as much as you can. This is my and now we can, yeah. Um, vote? Yes, so we can. Yes. 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 Yeah. Thank you for your speeches, lavish with the good yes. idea. Yeah. Oh, you're the only one that you use the word. Not even me. <laughs> Okay, so we don't want to move. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do you have some questions? Agenda? Yeah. Oh, you have it ready? Do you have it? Do you have agenda? Promoting? Yeah. Why are you doing it? Okay. Tell us a lavish story. <laughs> <laughs> the party is gonna be lavish. <laughs> the Chinese party is gonna be a lavish one. Yeah, no, 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 
Yes, I yes, see. Okay, yes, so we continue, uh, and we have actually uh, we know our table topic session. Back to you. And um, yeah, yeah, thank you, Smith. It was very nice, very interesting, and uh, energizing. So, and now I would like to, um, and we just moved to our next part of our meeting. This is about evaluation and I would like to ask Andrew Bin to come on stage and introduce how we are doing today. Thank you. Hello dear friends, it's, e uh, it's difficult to evaluate the meeting that you have prepared. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, um, I, I know the flaws, I won't name them. <laughs> Uh, though, my duty today was to listen to you and look for good examples of preparation, organization, delivery, enthusiasm, observation, and performance. And as an aspect of an evaluation and feedback, I'd like to remind you about this thing. So it's easy to criticize, it's easy to say what was bad, but it's not, for some of them it might be easy, but still. Uh, you shouldn't just say, mention the flaws, you should uh, give an advice how to improve the performance, yes? And um, the other person shouldn't take it, shouldn't, it's not a must to follow this, follow that advice, but you can use it as a, um, you can just widen your choice of techniques and and um, methods of better speaking. So, to start with, let's start with the report of the personal evaluator of our only speech today, Valerius. And the personal evaluator of her speech is Daniel Zakharov. Thank you very much. Madam General Valeria, dear Valeria, dear Toastmasters, have you been intrigued with the title of Valeria's speech? Give me a zen, from cheer to cheer. What is that speech going to be about? I thought that uh, perhaps you did as well. Have you been cheered by her speech? Do you think? she could be considered as a smile leader. Perhaps that is her leadership style because her project was actually to tell us about her leadership style and in a rather oblique way uh, perhaps she communicated to us that her leadership style is being a smile leader. Uh, because those who are in control, those who are smiling, are true leaders, perhaps. But let's start from the very beginning. We have experienced a speech, in my view, with a superb opening. I personally have been mesmerized. Uh, it was like artillery firing from dozens of cannons simultaneously. Uh, there was a very intricate line of narration from cheerleaders to Valeria herself to the smile leaders. There was a very effective and efficient use of the visual aids of the slides. There was a complete uh, use of uh, gestures on the stage, uh, vocal modulation, and it all was at the very beginning. It was just a very strong and powerful beginning. Uh, it was also a well-structured speech where we have a, a counter point of cheerleaders who are controlling themselves and a humble Valeria who uh, perhaps was communicating to us she has still room for development. <laughs> Then she gives us four tips. Uh, some of them could be viewed questionable. For example, people are not mind readers ask for help. But there is always a fine balance between being engaging and coming across as needy. 
Uh, so that's uh, a judgment call, really. Uh, but what I really would have loved to see more is a more balanced structure of the speech. Because there was a superb opening, a, a, a fairly robust uh, middle ground with those four tips, and a very vague, very weak conclusion. Uh, those friends will catch you. Will they catch me? Uh, how, will they get, uh, how will they catch me? Something uh, that I would love to see more. And uh, overall, I think the project has been accomplished well, and I congratulate you with that achievement. Thank you, Daniel. Mm. I have to give feedback to you. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you touched the content of this of uh, Valeria's uh, speech. Yes, <laughs> it was a speech, and you mm. uh, you your evaluation wasn't uh, what wasn't completely positive, right? There was some things that Valeria can think about and improve next time, all right? So I, I really liked your evaluation and I think it will be a good um, um, <laughs> <laughs> What? It will be good. It will be good. It will be useful for Valeria. Now, let's uh, continue with the reports of our experts. And after the reports, I will also make some, give some advice to the uh, role takers as Toastmaster and Toastmaster Table Topics Master. Right. The reports. The first report will be will be done by the account Samira. Dear fellow Toastmasters and guests, I'm really happy to announce that Valeria Pogarelova, Miles Plek, <laughs> and Daniel Bezolakov had zero fill awards. <laughs> <laughs> it seems that we are not happy. <laughs> okay, and now, uh, Yukatirina Dinova uses uh, six filler words, R and M. Yana, mm -hmm. yeah, five filler mm -hmm. words, R and M. Nikolai, more than ten filler words, R. Please pay attention. Uh, Tina, three filler words, R and so. Then I charge eight fewer words. Um, and Yuri, more than five uh, air. Then you'll have more than eight R. And Anna Rubina used R twice. <laughs> 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 please, don't, please don't be discouraged by this. Toastmasters from more than two years, but I still use <laughs> <laughs> a few words. And I hope that uh, you found uh, a few tips that I mentioned earlier useful and your speech will be clear, more effective, and more engaging in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Samira. I was impressed with the preparation you did. So, your introduction. Uh, speech was almost. It took us. Prepared. <laughs> yeah, it took us speech, uh, five minutes. So I am not if if you were in time, but so I will uh, would um, award your um, role as the preparation of the day. Wow! <laughs> yes. it was a minor role and. Few people really take any <laughs> effort to prepare for this <laughs> <possible. laughs> Yes, and your report was detailed and accurate, and we had three winners. Congratulations. <laughs> yes, yes well, maybe we will find some to <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. Okay, I'm so sorry. the next expert is going to be the grammarian, Martina. <laughs> Thank 
Thank you, Anna. Thank you, General Vasilevich. So I'll be very short because you, I think, you did a very good job in terms of um, giving, like, not making many, many grammar grammar mistakes. I pointed out just two, just two very good uh, sentences. Maybe because today I'm a bit asleep. Because I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure there were more. So Samira so said, cast a shadow of doubt. And um, Daniel, among others, I like very much artillery firing from a multitude of multitude of cannons. I like very much. Mm -hmm. And uh, about the word of the day, um, Daniel mentioned it. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah, I think because we, we remove it from there. And Valeria after Daniel. <laughs> hey, hey, I wrote it. <laughs> right. Uh, I like that you mentioned not only uh, the good examples of the language, yes, and we had a person who was. What's the word? Help me. <laughs> what word are you looking for? <laughs> uh, Fontaining, no? What? For, no, the wrong word. Uh, Using Danny, I'm talking about Daniel. Yeah. Whose uh, usage of the word word Daniel, is Daniel. extraordinary. Yes, yeah. always yeah. extraordinary. Very eloquent. He's like a fountain. Yes, he's eloquent. He's like a fountain of really advanced, sophisticated words. Yeah. 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 I was full of Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, uh, thank you, <laughs> Martina, that you also mentioned the good usage of the of vocabulary, right? It's very important to notice good examples. Uh, who's the next expert? The timer. Okay, the timer. Mikhail. So, guys, uh, everybody was uh, pretty much on time, but uh, there are still some people who did uh, in excess. Who? No. Let me point out. Should, should I do them uh, personally? No, I yeah, think so. so. <laughs> yeah. So, let's start. Um, the first one, a, a counter, Samira, 32 seconds. Oh, that's okay. Then Valeria, no. not so much, uh, 50 <laughs> seconds only. Oh my god. 50 or 15? 50, 50. 50 seconds. But for a speech for seven of seven minutes, I think it's not that. And I had a bad conclusion. What the hell did I say? Uh, Yuri, only six seconds. <laughs> uh, it was regarding the table topics uh, speech. Then, uh, uh, Anna, did you participate in the table? No. Ah, uh, this, this one, sorry. Oh, Katya, sorry. It's okay. Uh, ten will, seconds, sorry. We will the same. Beg your pardon. <laughs> Uh, Daniel, you spoke for uh, three minutes and uh, seven seconds, so it's uh, only in excess of se seven seconds. Uh, Martin, a bit, a bit of short of time. You spoke short, yeah? Yes, 54. For what, grammar or the... No, for your report? final report. Oh, okay. Fine. Well. And then myself, in excess of uh, 45 <laughs> seconds. So, <laughs> but I'm in a good uh, team, so to say. <laughs> Uh, okay, as for the role of the timer, mm, uh, I would like to, so as I, as I have said, you shouldn't take, follow the advice. Uh, in the introduction, you decided to mention all the rules, all the time for everyone, yes? And I think it might be difficult for people to digest all these numbers. So. Usually the participants know their time limits and you should just say that I will show the green at your minimum time level, time, what? Time limit? Limit, yes, I will show the yellow at da, 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 and I will <laughs> show the red light when your limit is over. Just to generalize all these numbers into one sentence. But you would have asked, what should I tell them in my introduction? Yes, yes, it yes, if not, <laughs> not the rules. So some people are mm, try to be creative and connect the introduction with the topic of the day. So you can um, 
contemplate on the calling and time. So, for example, uh, some people find their calling when they are 70 or 80, I don't know, something like this. Just, uh, that's just uh, some idea. Okay, before we will go to the role of the quiz master and finish our meeting, I'd like to tell what I think about the Toastmaster of the day. Yes, I was again impressed with the preparation and uh, fortunately we have time for all this, <clears throat> for all the, um, it, it was like a workshop really about finding your calling and I think it was useful for some younger <laughs> I hope. Yes, yeah. no, but I was surprised that me. even the uh, older, older generation of our club is still <laughs> thinking about this <laughs> uh, topic and is having problem with that. <laughs> okay, I think this was all very useful, very structured. Uh, the transitions to the role takers were okay, uh, except one thing: you left the timer. To the, the end, end. Yeah, yes, yeah. and then he at the end when everybody took or, or have already taken their stage, he started to describe the rules. How much time they should <laughs> spend yes, yes. on the stage? Yes, the time should go um, first. I know it, but not I, I, first. Usually, we t uh, yeah, the first the one is the sort the of the day. Yes, and then timer. But so you can choose timer or sort of the day or sort of the day timer. <coughs> mm -hmm. So okay. And uh, as the president, you also <laughs> gave uh, a very interesting speech about the division district. I would also add, why do we need all this thing, all this uh, <coughs> hierarchy and what is all about? I think the main point is to, uh, that's the um, ladder to go to the co to pr proceed with the contests yeah. and also the division the higher levels they help organizationally something like this so explain why do we need this all this pyramid <laughs> why we need this pyramid okay sort of the day i knew who i uh, could have asked to take this role two hours before the event <laughs> because uh, Nicola is full of thoughts and ideas and I think you did really great and the story was mm, uh, useful for all of us <laughs> так, table topics master <laughs> prepared a lot of questions and um, I think you did really well Yes, almost everyone were covered with the questions. You even, uh, even Jana wasn't afraid to take the stage. I think that's a good <laughs> sign that the table topics master could involve the newcomers who are usually are very scared to so, so come on stage. Yes, you, mm -hmm. probably okay, she will well be the member of the <laughs> Okay, так, uh, have I? Is everyone? Так, I would like yes. to say thank you to Andre for being <laughs> our webmaster. I, yes, I yes, think so. Master, yes. Yeah, so yeah, thank you so much. The meeting was organized really well. I think we all had fun in this cozy, yeah, um, friendly atmosphere, right? And you could um, improve your skills. But we have one more role, and we will finish our meeting with some fun and yes, and answer the questions of the quiz master, who is Yekaterina. Kate, are you here with us? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me well? Yes, Unfortunately, I can hear the interruptions. I hope it's not the same for you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. We can hear and we will help you. We'll be your hands. Uh, yes, thank you. So, yeah, I have several questions for you. I hope you didn't miss anything. So, my first question uh, is, how many secrets of Zen did Valeria share? Oh, secrets of Zen. <laughs> four, four, four. Can you name each of them one by one? You can listen one by four. one. Pause. That was the yeah, second. Uh, people are not re mind readers. Nice. Uh, Curiosity. Curiosity. Uh -huh. 
One more. <laughs> One more. Oh yeah, yeah, you guys. You, you, you ah. can <laughs> Yeah, you have the presentation. <laughs> yeah. It was set uh, something. Set, set an example. Yes. Oh, there we go. Yes. Okay. I don't know. Everyone I wants know. to. I know. Answer to. Yes, that's true. That's <laughs> Next, what happened to Miles' phone? <laughs> the, the battery, the charger, the charger! No, he it, lost it. It got... He uh, broke. It <laughs> no? No idea. The charger cable is broken because it's his wife's phone. Yeah, but what happened to his phone? Something oh, escalated. He gets charged in a peculiar way. The charger has to be... No, well, no. What, what happened with in, his in phone? In one specific position. Did he say? Can you hear? Can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, I can hear. Uh, right. What did Valerius Bravo study? Oh, no, we don't know the answer to the second question. What's the yeah. right answer? It, about the phone of Miles, Miles phone. What is the answer? It's Honestly, I misheard it. That's why I asked it. <laughs> 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 Okay, continue. What is the third one? Uh, yeah. Uh, what did Valerius Bravo study at university? <laughs> you were really good today. <laughs> yeah, good. Uh, what is the big purpose according to Valeria? Be a nice person, just a nice person. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, what is the secret of success according to Martina? Secret. So one step at a time. No? Secret. <laughs> yeah, yeah, great. One thing at a time. Uh, but yeah, if you want to do that, it's fine. Four, four. <laughs> Everyone can hear whatever they want. <laughs> Yeah. That's the next level. Next. 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 What was the... Uh, can I continue? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who did Daniel want, want to become in his childhood? Lindquist. Yes. Uh, and what is, uh, what is Kate's advice to children? Don't study! Don't go to school! Don't go to school! Don't do nothing! Just do it! Okay, okay do we have more? I guess it was too easy, but I tried. Так, are they... is it all? Yep, that's all. Great! Yeah, thank, okay. you. That's thank, thank you! Yes, thank you! Yes, that was really you. good tweet. Uh, when it's easy, it's the best. Yes. Yeah, yeah. it's wonderful. Thank yeah. you, Kate. Thank you very much. Okay, I think I can give the stage back to our president. That yes, and now one. I'm a president. What's your change? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, okay. thank you so much. Uh, so, more notes and uh, something like that, more information, you already know, but I should say it again, during February we're going to uh, conduct a contest, so international contest, the first evaluation, and I encourage all of you, everybody, participate, because you don't need uh, any levels of whatever it is, you just need you one and you can participate. And also we have another contest, international contest, and here we have some restrictions and if uh, you'd like to know you can ask Anna and um, now we have a um, presentation of uh, what's the most exciting part of mm -hmm. our part <laughs> of our meeting today and what do you think who is the winner Diana <laughs> Everyone's 
So also we have after party, usually we go to some uh, local cafe and, and uh, have, uh, you know, conversation, small talk, chatting and whatever we are doing, drinking of course, <laughs> uh, and planning our future. And uh, basically, that, ah, our next meeting will be held in Tochka Kipenia, very important idea, and we will post it, of course, in our uh, chat, but please be attentive again. Uh, and please come on stage, all of you, and we are you going to You are going to be on uh, St. Valentine's Day? Yes. yes, it will be Valentine's Day, and we are going to prepare something interesting. I have no idea what exactly, but I suppose it will be. 